Hi, my name is Max Armstrong and I'm 16 years old and go to King's College. I'm interested in the work of a fire investigator. So Max is going to spend the day with senior specialist fire investigator Todd O'Donoghue. Sweet ass. So uh, what we'll do, Max, is we'll head up and I've got a, an introduction to fire investigation. It's a computer training package and it'll show you the sorts of things we need to look at if we get called to a real job today. Oh, that's great. The fire service has a directive to investigate and report on the causes of all fires in New Zealand. Peter Wilding is the National Manager for Fire Investigation and Arson Reduction. It's the role of the officer of the fire engine to determine the cause of the fire. If it's a very large fire, a complex fire, or if it's a fire of significance, then we would call in a specialist fire investigator working in the fire service. The first task for Max is to learn some basics about fire investigation. So Todd puts him to work with an ingenious interactive fire investigation computer program. What sort of things do you think could have started the fire on the bed there? Well, there's a hairdryer here, so that could have started it. And I also see some uh, cords going up into the bed, so maybe there's an electric blanket. Yeah. However, there's a suitcase here that seems quite burnt, so it might be that. Good work. Oh, hey, um, actually, there goes my pager, actually. Hey, look, we've got a house fire that uh, we could go and have a look at. So um, there's a real job we can go and see. Do you think you've learned enough to um, go and check it out and see what we can see? I hope so. All right, let's go and have a look. So what do you enjoy most about your job, Tom? Uh, I enjoy the fact that each day is different. Um, there's always a lot of things to think about, you know, different things to, to stimulate my brain. Um, and at the end of the day, I know that I'm out there helping people. The um, things I find in fire investigations and the fact that I'm finding things that are helping to stop fires and keep people safe is quite rewarding. I think for a start we'll uh, take my notepad so we can take a few notes. Just my little brush and shovel and my uh, general toolbox. So grab those overalls. Um, I'll also grab you a helmet and we'll grab a torch and stuff and we'll head on in and have a look. Looks like in here is the area where there's the worst burning. So that normally indicates that that's where the fire started. So we'll, we'll go in and see what sort of patterns we can see. Often we look for V patterns and things and even though a lot of the wall boards have gone we can look at those char patterns on the timber. We'll look on door frames and bits of furnishing. If they're more charred on one side but not the other, it shows us the fire's gone the way in that direction sort of thing. If I feel down there, I feel that the charring's not quite as deep. Yep. OK, so we know that the fire has come across this way and, and charred the couch as it's come across. So we'll head that back that way, um, looking for the cause of the fire. Todd and Max's detective work shows that the fire started near the couch and Todd suspects an accelerant might have been used to start the fire. Todd's comprehensive toolkit includes a detector that can sniff it out. You can see that's really starting to come up there into the uh, started off counting in parts per billion. But there's so much of something down there, it's now parts per million. We got up to almost 100 parts per million there, so that would be a good area if we get the police here for them to take a sample from and, and test it a bit. Once the fire scene is being fully examined by Todd and Max, the relevant areas of interest are photographed and details written down for future reference. As this fire is suspicious, Todd is called in the police. Hey Todd, Bill Maddox, so please suck, eh? Constable Bill Maddox is a scene of crime officer. I'll get Max to lead you in and show you where he found something, yep. eh? Sounds good. Okay, this way. Cheers, Max. Sample integrity is paramount when collecting forensic evidence. Bill's evidence collecting kit includes sterile plastic bags into which the samples from the fire are deposited. The bags are securely closed and labelled and then placed into sealed tins, which are numbered and signed by Bill, which then go for analysis to the forensic laboratory. A fascinating part of Todd's work is to recreate fire situations so that he can understand how a fire started and be able to stop it happening again. The fire service have their own testing facility in a remote location just outside Auckland. What we're going to do today is I've got these photos of, a, of an accident that happened uh, in a boat out in the harbour actually where this family were using a portable gas cooker and it exploded on them. And uh, as you can see, all the family that were on the boat suffered quite bad burn Ouch. injuries. Yeah, yeah, quite painful. And it's not the only time that this has happened. It's happened a few times throughout the country. So what we're wanting to do is recreate it and, and see if we can work out what's going on. I have, I've got one down here that, that uh, exploded uh, further down in, in Central Island, actually. And as you can see, um, there's the gas can canister that was in it. The whole end is blown out of the gas canister, and it's quite badly disfigured the cooker. Now we think part of the problem could be that you know they're supposed to be used with, with that's called the trivet up that way with a, only a certain size pot on it. We yep. think some people are using a pot that's too big and even in some cases they're able to light it with the trivet upside down so we think it's getting too hot inside. So should we go inside and have a look at what we've set up in there? Yep. We've um, 
set up some mannequins here as if they're a family sitting around a gas cooker. We've set up all these little cameras so that they're from the safety of that control container, we can watch what's going on and record what's happening. And also, um, attached to one of the mannequins, we've got a little temperature sensor there, so we can see what sort of temperature the fireball gets to that's being created. And another sensor is actually running inside the gas canister area inside the cooker. So again, we can monitor the temperature. Well, Max, let's have a look what's happened in here. As you can see, quite a bit of carnage. Not the big explosion we were expecting, but um, you can imagine the force of that would have actually done some damage if these were real people. After a fascinating morning and an explosive afternoon, it's the end of Max's day with Todd. Is it just the job for him? It's been a very interesting day. Uh, I learned a lot about the fire service. It's not just driving around big red trucks, putting out fires. Uh, Todd showed me a lot and did a great job and I might be interested in uh, taking up this job later on in my life. Well, it's been a busy day, but uh, Max did really well. Uh, asked a lot of inquisitive questions, had a logical mind. I hope this is the sort of career that he may choose to consider in the future. To become a fire investigator, you will need to be inquisitive, logical thinker, but open to all options. Good life experience is a bonus. You will need to be a good communicator as you will be working with other professional organisations and often you'll be working with people who are traumatised. Most fire investigating training takes place within the fire service and having firefighting experience is highly desirable. For more information about the New Zealand Fire Service and careers, check out www.fire.org.nz. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.